Today I'm going to show you what's inside of this 6 speed automatic transmission from a 2010 Ford Escape. We're also going to take a look inside this transfer case to see how the all wheel drive system works. Take a look around this transmission at the back here we do have a dipstick, we do have cooler lines coming on the left side here and this is where the driver's side axle would be. And over on this side here we do have the torque converter which is the input that comes from the engine. There are two more engine mounts, one at the back, one at the front and of course the one on the driver's side at the top here. The transmission pan is actually located on the front here where we have a plug that goes to the transmission computer. I'm going to start stripping down this transmission by first removing the mounts. This is the old school way of mounting things with a big giant bushing and a bolt. I'm remove the rear mount. There's these interesting little holders for the transmission lines. Let's see if I can get these off. I'm going to have to cut them off. I win. I don't know how this was not leaking, but that's how loose it was. I'm just going to bend it out of the way. It doesn't seem I can get a wrench in here. I'm going to remove this transfer case. There's just three e-torx bolts on the front half here. There's also a hidden bolt on the back. Right now I'm going to remove this transfer case. Now I'm going to see if I can remove this torque converter. Now I'm going to go around and move all the bell housing bolts. I hold it to the transmission casing. Oh, there's a giant chain for the final drive. Very interesting transmission design. You can see this here is the input shaft that went into this casing over here. The side of the casing here has the oil pump embedded in it with the oil pickup tube and filter down in there. It kind of sucks though that you can't change that out. You pretty much have to split the transmission to change that filter. This here is the little drain plug that you access from the bottom. More interesting though is this chain drive to the final drive. Basically the transmission shifts its gears and it takes its final drive out to the back here where we got this gear. Now I'm not sure but this chain looks very sloppy especially for something that's supposed to be driving a vehicle. It goes out to this final drive here which is actually free spinning. Now the casing of this would attach to the transfer case for the all wheel drive setup. And it also appears that there's a final planetary gear set over here with a ring gear embedded over here. This is just a plastic baffle to keep oil inside of this area. Now the transmission fluid I drain out of this thing is pretty well used but it's not completely black and burnt up. You rotate the chain it makes the clicking sound just like your bicycle. It's also got this interesting rubber wiper here. Alright let's see if we can pull out this final drive here. You can see it's got an interesting planetary gear set over here. Probably for a gear reduction. It's got a sun gear over here. It goes from small to big. Oh, the final drive actually just pops right out as well. That's just a straight cut gear. I wonder how much noise that would make. And we'll take out the final drive chain. This is a pretty hefty chain. Kind of reminds me of a transfer case chain like in a truck. Tear down the rest of this transmission as much as you can. Whoa. Okay. This here is the trigger wheel for the output shaft speed sensor. Next I'm going to try to remove this transmission pan. Now some of these fasteners are so crusty. Normally I'd use my wife's toothbrush, but these are so crusty I might have to use my grandfather's toothbrush. And with a lot of prayers, or as they say in some cultures, Akuna Matata, we're going to try to get these bolts out. Now normally there'd be a wiring harness going here, but with copper being more expensive than meth and cocaine, people have got other things on their mind. That actually looks kind of watery. A couple of these veins dropped out of nowhere, unless they're from the last teardown on this stand. Now this is a 6F35 transmission, it was co-developed with GM back in the mid 2000s. So you'll find it on a lot of front wheel drive GM and Ford vehicles. Now the Ford ones were less reliable and part of it was due to this valve body. You typically find these on Fusions, Escapes and Explorers with front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Now the shift linkage plugs in up here. I'm going to remove this little arm here that provides the detents. Looks like the entire plug moves. That's your park neutral switch. And I'm going to remove all the T30 bolts going around. Let's see if we can fry this out. Oh, we got more transmission fluid coming out there. I can remove the top half of the throttle body. Moving back inside of the transmission, I'm going to remove this baffle. Looks like this piece takes transmission fluid from this port over here and sprays it all over the chain that's riding around here for lubrication. I'm going to take out the spring here. Take off the parking pole. I'm going to remove the speed sensor. A giant snap ring here. I'm going to actually take it out with a crowbar. Now I can remove this plate here. That actually encloses a giant clutch. I can remove this top piece here, which is what the clutch latches onto. And then I can remove the clutch bands. And these are in okay shape. The frictions are still there, but it's a little bit dark. Now let's pull out the first planetary gear set. This here is the planet carrier on this side and a ring gear on this side. This uh, transmission looks in pretty clean shape. The bearing over there and looks like we got a ring gear on one side, planet carrier on the other side and we got a sun gear. There we go. This out. This is our 
first piston. This one's got interesting wings, it doesn't go all the way around. You always have to watch these little rubber hoses coming from the valve body that feed that piston. Sometimes they can cause them to get caught up when you're pulling them out. And now I can remove the next set of clutches. Oh, that's a sprag bearing. Alright, there's one more snap ring to peel out of here. Now we can take out this piece here. It's not a sprag bearing, it's a ratchet. Alright, now I can walk this housing here from this ratchet gear out. Very tight. Half an hour later, I finally got this piece out kind of wedged itself in there and made all of those marks as it was coming up. It's supposed to be a clearance fit, but it's very, very tight. So yeah, all these little metal shavings in here is actually from me taking that thing out. That was quite the task. Meanwhile, you can take the next set of clutches out of here. Again, these clutches look used, but they're not bad. I always use a pick, not a brush. Got a little snap ring inside of here. We're taking out another snap ring maybe. So this entire thing actually lifts out as one assembly. Now that's not the rear piston. The rear piston is actually buried inside of here. Right, one more snap ring in here. There you go. And this is the seal. So the cylinder is this chamber inside of here and then this forms the piston. As this piston fills up with fluid it's going to push up against the clutch set that was right against it. This is the seal at the bottom here which sits inside of this chamber and you can see this is the hole here that fills it up. So besides part of the valve body that's machined into this case, this half is pretty boring. Let's move to the other half. Now this is the transmission filter and you can see there are a little bit of particles that are resting on here. That's a good thing because you want it to be trapped on the magnet here and not go inside the filter and get strained through the system. Let's remove this baffle. I'm assuming this keeps oil sloshing around the chain which goes around this area here. I'm going to remove the oil pump next. It's rusty because it sat in the rain for a few days. I wish my pump had so many screws. Of course they had to make one of them 8 mil, so you have to change your tool. Alright, I'm going to pop this apart here. We're pretty much done with the casing. There's nothing interesting other than a ring gear that's fixed onto the casing here. Now this is a dipstick tube and you can see the dipstick sticking into the casing. One thing is you don't want to overfill your ATF because it has to be just below this seal level. If it goes above the seal level it's just going to leak out the axle. Well one big drawback of this transmission is you pretty much have to remove the oil pump and split the case in order to take off this strainer here. You can see it just uses a screw action, comes off. The whole thing is actually coated in this metallic particle kind of substance. But for an oil pump, this does look pretty complicated and heavy. So let's take it apart real quick. Just remove that housing there. And you can see it's a gear style oil pump. Look, it's peeing fluid. This is a gear style oil pump, so you can see as the input shaft rotates with this, it's actually going to draw fluid in here and send it out this way. You have two valves over here and that's going to control the amount of pressure that you need. And these arteries here are what's going to take it to the valve body. Now fluid which is drawn up from the bottom of the transmission enters the oil pump over here. Definitely a used filter, probably the original for this one, but it's not clogged up with any particles. The oil pump has this nice thick hard stubby shaft here that's pressed on and that shaft gets into the very slippery wet torque converter to become its stator. Let's take a look at this all-wheel drive transfer case. There should be gear oil inside of here. Yeah, it's draining gear oil all right. And I don't have a pan under there. All right, so this transfer case has a drain port over here. I'm just going to drain out all the gear oil from it and then we can take this apart. Funny thing is this doesn't have a drain and fill port. There's just one port here where you have to use a suction to pull out the old fluid and put a new one. I'm going to remove all these tens. Like the gears are coming with it. Yeah, I don't think someone was taking care of the fluid in this thing. It's a little dark. Now the all-wheel drive system in this vehicle is mostly mechanical. We have a center and a front differential kind of integrated into the final drive. The center differential is what's going to power this transfer case, while the front differential is going to power the axle which actually goes through this housing over here to the right side wheel. Now this is going to rotate with some torque increases over here and that's what's going to power the rear prop shaft. As I remove this over here, we have a bevel gear and a bevel gear on this side, similar to a differential in the rear of your car. And that's what's going to change the direction from transverse to longitudinal. Now everything inside of here is only cooled and lubricated by the fluid sitting in here. There's no fluid pump, it's just splashing around. You've got bearings here and you've got the teeth that are going to wear out. Now taking a look at how the all-wheel drive system is set up here, we have the final drive, which is coming off the transmission chain, which is going to be powering this gear over here. 
and this gear is actually powering a sun gear inside of this planetary gear set. Now if you remember the ring gear for this planetary gear set is fixed in the transmission casing and does not rotate which means that the input for the final drive is always the sun gear and the output is going to be this planet carrier. Now connected to the planet carrier is the front differential which has these spider gears on the inside. Now spine to these spider gears are the right axle which is going to go through the transfer case into this one and then the left side axle is going to connect up to this one. Now this part here works like a normal open differential. If you want to learn more about how open differentials work, check out the video I have linked above. But essentially an open differential will allow a 50-50 torque split between the two front wheels. And it also allows for a speed difference between these two when you're negotiating a corner. Now for the all-wheel drive setup, the planet carrier is also going to drive the spline over here which is what splines into the transfer case. There's no center differential inside the transmission or the transfer case and that's because this is a slip and grip style all-wheel drive system and that's because the back of the transfer case goes down to the prop shaft to the rear differential where there's a clutch and that clutch could be a viscous coupling an electromagnet or a multi-play clutch kind of like this one and the Ford Escape it's more of an electronically controlled clutch system which is going to lock up and transfer some of that torque from the front wheels off to the rear wheels. The only disadvantage I see here is that there's no decoupling or even a center differential that can difference the torque between front and rear. The only thing is you're always going to have the prop shaft and transfer case rotating which creates losses and gives you less fuel economy because there's no disconnect for it within the transfer case or transmission itself. If we take a look at the layout of the transmission we start at the front and kind of work our way to the back here. You'll see we've got a first clutch and then the planetary gear set. First thing is the sun gear which is actually splined to the input shaft over here. And we've got a planet carrier and it's got a ring gear for the next planet carrier which is over here and that itself also has another ring gear on it. Now after that we got another planet carrier with the interesting shape on the outside that splines to the clutches and then we have a ring gear. Now after all that we have our piston. Essentially fluid can be driven either to the top or bottom pistons and that's going to cause it to rise up. This ring around here is a piston return ring. It's made of a spring steel. And actually in some of these transmissions, they were known to snap. That was kind of a weak point on one of these. Now when your piston return snaps, this piston is going to start dragging and remaining in the applied position. Now you're going to have all kinds of symptoms like clutches burning up and the transmission slipping. So moving on, we had another set of clutches. And then we have this ratcheting gear, which is like a one-way sprag type of gear. Except it's not like a sprag bearing. It actually uses little teeth. Now when I was taking this thing apart, the little teeth that stuck out of here actually fell off. But essentially that would sit inside of here and it would transmit torque in one direction, but it would rattle its way in the other direction and freewheel. Kind of like the cog on the rear of your bicycle. I can already imagine this thing going tick, 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 tick as you're going down your local skateboard ramp with your Ford Escape. Alright, next up we got this clutch assembly. There is a piston inside of here that controls this clutch, which is this one here. You can see it's well worn, but it's not completely burned through. And on the outside here, we do have this clutch. You can see that it's free now and it's sliding around. Now at the back here, we do have this piston assembly, which I'm going to attempt to take off. There's a snap ring around here. There's a piston return spring. So here's one common reason why these transmissions fail. Inside of this groove over here is where this seal sits right over here and much like broken ring lines on your engine's piston this little machine section out here creates a little weak spot and this piece likes to crack off and break then your piston can no longer hold any pressure against the cylinder and you have a leak and therefore you can't apply the clutch properly which leads to slipping you'll see the holes inside of here which get fed transmission fluid to apply this piston as you can see the holes over here which line up with these ribs which is going to fill up that cylinder these piston return springs are nice and firm kind of like my mattress was before I got married and this is what the inside of that cylinder looks like got to make sure all of these seals are intact Let's take a look inside of this valve body got a lot of these shims over here and you can see that there's these solenoids located here there is some of that paste inside of here indicating well use of this transmission and we do have the hookups for the computer which are going to control these solenoids with this plastic thing being a bus bar kind of thing. the valve body in this transmission is basically like a brains they form hydraulic circuits with all of these little valves inside of here that move back and forth according to fluid pressure that's all controlled by these little valves over here electronically so you know which one of those clutches to lock up when you want to be in the correct gear these little steel balls being so hard can sometimes wear through the aluminum over here and cause something to not seal. I'm just going to remove these torques. There we go. 
the whole bus bar unplugs. It's made of plastic and you've got the little terminals on here that all connect to one plug. Luckily there's no computer inside of here. There is a terminating resistor though. And then you got the actual valves. I wonder if these are held in by anything. These are actually not held in by anything except the bus bar. And there's a little filter with two rubber o-rings inside of here. These are basically going to redirect your fluid flow. Oh there's these little pins in here too. That's pretty cool. Alright enough of the valve body. And that's pretty much a look at the 6F35 6-speed automatic transmission from Ford. I was expecting a more complicated all-wheel drive setup so we can compare it to that Quattro or the Subaru video that I did. It's pretty interesting to see that they still use a chain drive although it's quite rudimentary and mostly limited to transfer cases because there's a lot of failure modes that could happen with a moving chain. Now reliability on six-speed Fords are very hit and miss. The GMs actually did it a lot better. So if you do have a car with this transmission inside, may the Ford be with you. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.